are on live log is there anything important in today's newspaper regarding your exam nothing no one read Can you people see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. <coughs> so let's start our class. Okay. How many of you have completed that Indian Polity book short one, which I have sent you? Nearly hundred and eight pages was there. I have completed. Sir. Okay, you have completed. Anyone else? Half completed or completed? So seventy-five percent over. Okay. So keep reading and revising that, and whoever haven't read it or I mean just started, they should I mean do it properly and continuously regular basis. So that's why I mean you can hold whatever you are reading. Revision is really important. So first we will. Uh, Okay. First, we will start our uh, short-term test. We will look once, and most of you have uh, did it. I mean, I mean, from previous tests, your uh, score is low uh, comparatively. Last time, out of twenty, you people have scored more than fourteen. So this time, it is a twelve point eight one. So averagely, you people have scored. low uh, because i mean these questions were not only factual there were many conceptual question i think due to that i mean your score went down you people can see my screen uh, yes, yes sir yes sir okay so the first question was the indian constitution was enforced on so indian constitution was enforced on 26 january 1950 so always remember there are differences between enacted and enforced it was enacted i mean it was sorry adopted and enforced there is difference it was adopted on 26 november 1949 and it was enforced on 26 january 1950 so don't get confused between these terms adopted and enforced or adopted and enacted second question which most of you have uh, did wrong only 39% have did it correctly the first linguistic state of andhra came into existence it came in 1953 uh, uh the a person his name was uh, Patabi Sita Ramallu something. Patti Sri Ramallu. Sorry. Patti Sri Ramallu. Patti Sri Ramallu. Oh yeah, Patti Sri Ramallu. He was the person who uh, went on hunger strike for creation of uh, another state on the, on the base of language. How many days? Fifty-six. Yes, fifty-six days, and then after that he died due to that, and after that a riot started in whole. Uh, in that time, that was Madras state. A riot happened in whole Madras state, and after that, government compelled to do that. And after that, they formed the Andhra state in 1953. And after looking that creation of Andhra state on linguistic ground, other state also started demanding. After that, some committees were formed, like JBP committee and other committee. They denied to make. separate state on the base of language and finally uh, fazal ali committee formed and uh, 
Fazal Mani was the justice of a court and he was I think chief justice of Patna High Court during that time. So Fazal Mani committee was formed and Fazal Ali report presented in 1956 and in that uh, report he said yes uh, let's form the uh, state on the base of uh, I mean we should also look at the administrative purpose also with the linguistic purpose I mean so finally they agreed in 1956 by Fajal Ali committee to make other states also on the base of language as well as administrative compatibility. So this this started from here. I mean all the creation of state on the base of language started from 1953 by creation of Andhra as a separate state. Then next question is who was the first speaker of Lok Sabha? All of you did it correctly. 91% got it correctly. Then next question constituent assembly for undivided, undivided India met on. It met on 9 December 1946 and on this day Sachidanand Sinha was made president as a temporary president and on 11 December finally Rajin Prasad made the president. So remember this date because it's quite important date. that's why I have put it here. <coughs> Next question is the concept of welfare state is included in which part of Indian court? It is under DPSP and today we are going to discuss this same DPSP in our lecture. Next question is Indian constitution is regarded as federal in form and unitary in spirit. Next one is the constitution of India borrowed the scheme of Indian federation from the constitution. Nearly 50%, 57% got it correct but some of you have got it confused with USA. So always remember whenever we talk about USA, USA's federation is different I mean compared to India and Canada. He, that whatever ideal federation we think USA's federation is more closer to that but our federation is not same as USA's federation. Our federation's concept is more similar with Canada. How it is different? Let me give you some examples. Like uh, uh, Americans have uh, dual constitution. I mean their state has separate constitution and at uh, uh, central level they have a different constitution. Then they have dual citizenship. State has their own citizenship and uh, center has their own citizenship. Then judiciary, India has an integrated judiciary but in a state they have their own judiciary and at center level they have their own judiciary and they deal with other other I mean provisions and uh, what else we can see, we can see also residuary power is with state. In India residuary is power with center. So all these factors we can see, I mean how much we are different with uh, federal structure of America but we, if we move to Canada, Canada is also more uh, federal state but inclined towards unity in the same way we are also inclined towards unity in nature as a federal state. Can Someone has asked you a question. Okay, what is the question but sir didn't the government of India act 1935 also introduced yeah, that was federalism. India is a federal state, we agree, but we are different with American federation. We are closer to Canadian uh, uh, federalism. That's what I am explaining. I have given you example of citizenship. I have given you example of constitution. I have given you example of uh, residuary power. So I have given you example of judiciary. So all these things and also you can see their upper house in their I mean every 50 states have two member in senate house but don't we do not have the same provision in our Raj Sabha. So we can say that America is more federal than our federal structure than Indian federation. So everybody got it. Can anyone tell me we say supreme court and we have high court. Can anyone tell me um, in America they have Supreme Court and what they call to their court which is equivalent to our High Court? Federal Court. No, no, no. 
they call it Supreme Court also. So if they have like Florida in the state, so official name of their high court what is equivalent to us that is Supreme Court of Florida. So Supreme Court of California, Supreme Court of Texas, it is like that. Okay. So everybody got it? I mean this is really conceptual question. So you have the conceptual clarity on these things. So next is separation of judiciary from the executive is enjoined by where it is mentioned. So it is mentioned in directive print but but 49% only got this answer. Most of you have confused with 7 schedule. In 7 schedule there is a uh, separation, I mean there is a uh, given relation between center and state in 7 schedule. Not separation of judiciary and executive. It is mentioned in DPSP. We will read it. The, then the word economic justice is found in it is economic justice is mentioned in our preamble as well as in our directive principles. Mostly half of you have marked the preamble. I mean 32% marked preamble and 36% marked preamble as well as DPSP. So we already have read so you have idea that it is in preamble. Today we also read DPSP then I will also explain that where it is in DPSP where it talk about economic justice. Next one is the part of constitution that reflects the mind and ideas of framers. It preamble which reflects the mind and ideas, ideas of the framers. I have put uh, this sentence in our uh, when I was uh, teaching you the preamble in that I have put it this line so you can read it from there. Which of the following is not a basic feature of Indian constitution? India is a parliamentary form of government. So, India is not a presidential government. So, most of you have did it correctly. And 9% have marked the federal government. India is a federal government. Don't, I mean, confuse with that. But Indian federal structure is different. And this federalism is a part of also our basic structure. In a parliament form of government, the real power of the state are vested in council of ministers headed by prime minister. Here it is mentioned the real power. Whenever it talks about real power, then we have to focus on council of minister and prime minister. And if we generally talk about where in the parliament form of government, uh, I mean where, I mean who has the authority or power, if it would be on simple term, then we will select the president because president is the authority under which all the executive actions are taken under in India. But whenever it talks about the real power, and so we know the real power is enjoyed by council of minister headed by prime minister because whatever president does, it does on the suggestions, on the recommendations of council of minister headed by prime minister. Then next comes the India is a democratic republic because why India is a democratic republic because it is headed by the head of the state is elected by the people. First understand what is the term of republic. Republic means something that is made by by the people. I mean people are the authority who should I mean make someone who should elect someone and in democracy we know that larger crowd elects uh, to their representative and in a republic state always someone a common person and who is elected by person becomes the head of the state so by the way most of you have did it correctly the constitution of india provides as an integral part so we don't have judicial reviews concept similar to USA. Most of you have marked nearly 32%. Always remember in, in, uh, in USA judicial reviews whose concept is more better than India. I mean they have more power in judicial review in USA than in India. Always remember it. Because they, I mean 
whenever we bring something in front of constitution then constitution check it but uh, in USA they can I mean uh, self less they you I mean Supreme Court themselves can start and look I mean uh, check the judicial review but here in India we need to bring it in front of Supreme Court then they check it I mean they, they look the for judicial review for any provision which of the part and why it is written that it is integral part because we have read yesterday that article 13 gives the power of judicial review Next is which of the following fundamental right is also available to foreigner on the soul of India. 60% did it kindly because we have already read yesterday that Sorry, I didn't know how I, I mean, get out of this uh, meeting. Am I audible? Uh, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, how much I have covered? I mean, I don't know how I mean I got it. Can you people see my screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so I was talking about this. Have, do you people uh, uh, listen when I was explaining what fundamental right our I mean, Indians have and what fundamental foreigners have? Or I was talking this the constitution of India regarding judicial review. Yes, sir. So I think I have, everybody got it right. Judicial review that is. Yes, sir. Uh, under article 13 from where uh, it uh, it became a source for supreme court to review any thing okay so next is the which of the following fundamental rights is also available to a foreigner on the soul of india can anyone tell me which are the articles uh, available to foreigners okay which are not available to foreigners uh, 15, 16, 15, 19, 15, 29, 30. 15, 19, 29, 30. 226. 226? Great, Swala. That is great. Here I am talking about article do not enjoy by a foreigner in India. That is 15, 15 16, 16, 19, 19 20, 29, 30. 29, 30. 29 and 30. 29 and 30. Yes, yes, yes. Well, well, you have remembered it. Then next is who administers oath of the president that is chief justice of India who administers the oath of the president. Next is in which house of the parliament can the proceedings of impeachment of president be initiated. In any of the house either in Lok Sabha or Raj Sabha I mean we can I mean member of the uh, parliament assembly can initiate in any house lower house or upper house against the impeachment against the president for impeachment how many times has the financial emergency been declared in our country so so it till now it never happened in our country i mean we haven't faced financial emergency not even once but uh, in our neighboring country sri lanka is facing financial emergency emergency so everybody remember this term maybe I mean they can ask this thing can anyone tell how many times national emergency three, three, three times three, three times 
Okay, yes. So national emergency is uh, imposed three times in India. Can anyone tell on which time? The India China uh, war, India Pakistan war, and 1975 by India. Yes. So Yes, yes. Uh, so first it started through India China war and it come and it went till the 1965 war which we fought against the Pakistan. Then again emergency, I mean that was the first emergency which covered two wars, India China and India Pakistan of 1965. Then second emergency imposed under the Indira Gandhi when we fought 1971 war against Pakistan. And then third emergency, which is famous for emergency in 1975, which was imposed by Indira Gandhi again. So, okay. this was, so that was the third emergency. So till yet we have faced three national emergency, none of the financial emergency, and a lot of time the presidential emergency, president rule. So, if both the president and vice president are not available, available sorry, who perform the duties of the president? So, that is the Chief Justice of India, he performed that duty. But if Chief Justice of India is also absent, then Supreme Court, yes, Senior Moon Judge of Supreme Court, that, who, that, I mean, that, uh, who is appointed as the uh, president for that time being. Can anyone tell me who was the person who appointed as uh, president? I mean, judge. Which judge? Uh, Justice Hidayatullah. He was appointed as the president in his tenure. Which article says that there should be a governor? Only 47% got it correct. That is Article 153. Can anyone tell about the president? In which article it talks about the president? 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. 52. Yes, yes. So 52 is for president, 153 for governor. Which, what is the forum to constitute a meeting of either house of parliament? So 70% did it correctly. One tenth. What is the forum? Can anyone tell me? What is the forum? Most of it did it correctly, so... So, one tenth of the entire... No, no, I am asking what is forum. That is the requirement for forum. One tenth is requirement for forum. But what is forum? The minimum number of... Minimum number of judges sitting in... No, no, no. We are here talking about parliament. Minimum number of parliamentarians required to start the proceeding of parliament. If we want to do any activity, any work in parliament, we at least require that one tenth member should be present in parliament. So, so with the opposition also, right? You need 10% of the entire. Ah, ten percent of the entire. He can be from any party or any group. I mean, from government or opposition, it doesn't matter. But at least ten percent is required. So that's how we have. Uh, Look to what is what was in our short term test for. So I am doing it because I want to memorize you all these things because these are things which are going to ask in your exam. That's why I am focusing to briefly explain all these questions. Are you people getting what I am explaining? Yes, sir. So your methods are really nice. Sir. Okay. So I want that most of the thing you should remember or and learn from class. So you have to just revise it later by yourself. So now let's start with DPSP and fundamental duties we also cover. So DPSP start from DPSP is in part 4 of the Indian constitution and article 36 to 51 is covered under DPSP and then after 51 uh, article 
a 50 second comes and it is start with the union government related to union government so 51 a is also there 51 a there we will talk about that that is fundamental duty okay so can anyone tell me that where at which places in our constitution uh, the term state is defined the 36 and 12 so in our constitution at two places in article 12 and article 36 okay. these are the two places where state is defined that what is state in political science term I am talking I am not talking about the state province UP and P not like that state in political science term go, that is government what, what form the government and other part of the organs of the state so that is defined in article 12 and 36 so the concept of DPSP is took from Irish constitution but can anyone tell me from where Irish people took it from this constitution Uh, no, they took it from Spanish constitution. Yes, sir, Spanish, yeah. Ah, so, but we have to remember whenever it asks, we have to mark the Irish constitution. DPSP are in the nature of direct direction to the legislature or executive wings of the government which must be observed while making law and policy. Why DPSP is formed? These are the directives which work is to give direction to the legislatures and executive thing while making law and policies so these are the directives these are the not rights so then next is these principles try to develop and these are things are there in constitution to form or create a welfare state not a police state or any other kind of state or authoritarian state DPSPs along with fundamental rights contain the philosophy of constitution and the soul of the constitution. Can anyone tell me uh, what Ambedkar said about the DPSP? Ambedkar said the term novel ideas about DPSP. He termed that novel ideas. No, novel features. Novel features, novel ideas are under DPSP. So, our DPSP is classified into three parts. First is socialist principle, then Gandhian principles, then liberal intellectual principle. You are not, I mean, you are not supposed to remember under which word socialist come, under which word Gandhian come, under which word liberal articles come. You have to just have this idea that these are divided into three parts and some are Gandhian, some are liberal and some are the important articles that you have to idea that what is that and where it, I mean, put like article 14, can anyone tell what is there? Organization of Village Panchayat. Organization of Village Panchayat. That came from 73rd and 74th Amendment Act letter. Can anyone tell what is in 39A? Equal justice and free legal aid. Free legal aid. Ah, so in 39A, it is the talk about the free legal aid. Okay. And can you mention what's in 444, Article 44? Uniform Civil Code. Ah, it talks about Uniform Civil Code. Uniform Civil Code. Yes, yes. Right. What is in 48A? Protection and Improvement of Environment. Yes, protection and improvement of environment. Can anyone tell when this 39A and 48A came in our constitution? Because we already read that how ABC means in, uh, in our constitution. Can anyone tell by which amendment it came? 1976, 42nd amendment. 42nd. Yes, in 42nd amendment act, these things came in our constitution. And you know that's why 42nd Amendment Act is also known as Mini Constitution. 
So remember this term. Sometimes they ask, I mean, which amendment act is known as mini constitution? Why the why it is called mini constitution? Because lots of thing is amended and added in our constitution by 42nd Amendment Act. That's why it is called. So first is the definition of state is given in 36. Then in 37 it is written that how I mean it would be used, how it would be applied. All those things regarding that it is written in 37. Then 38 is talk about the welfare of the state. And then th article 39 came. We have read about the economical justice uh, in, uh, in that question series. Uh, in our test so here it is uh, we read what is in 39 and how it's talking about economical justice so in 39 it says right to adequate, adequate means of livelihood for all citizens equitable distribution of material sources of the community for the common good prevention of con concentration of wealth and means of production this is really important line. I mean, it says about that governments. It is government's responsibility to not let anyone accumulate lots of wealth. I mean, too much wealth. It is also government's duty. Here it is clearly mentioned: prevention of concentration of wealth and means of production. Equal pay for equal work for men and women. For men and women, both should get equal pay whatever they are equally doing then next but we have seen that in even our women labor and men labor we give less uh, amount to women labor we give more amount to men labor so these kind of things are still prevalent so but it i mean directs the government to reduce it to end it then next is preservation of health and strength of workers and children against forcible abuse. Opportunity for healthy development of children. Then Article 39A comes with talks about promotion of equal justice and free legal aid. And do you know uh, there is a um, uh, law in 1987, there is an act known as National Legal Service Act. It came in 1987 and its uh, work is to make aware people and provide free legal aid. This Article 39A, whatever it says, it should be implemented. I mean, came in real thing. So, for that, uh, in 1987, there was a act form known as Legal Service legal national legal service act something like that and after that at national level a body national legal legal service authority is formed then at state level state legal service authority is formed then district level it is district legal service authority is formed it in short form we say it nalsa salsa and dalsa so in every district of india you will have these kind of offices of dalsa so from where you can easily access the legal service aids. So th that came because of Article 39A A, to make it real, to provide uh, free legal aid to the people. I mean they have also given criteria for whom I mean they can get the legal aid. They have covered most of the marginalized section of this society. Then Article 40 talks about the organization of village panchayat. Then 41 talks about the right to work, to education, and to public assistance in certain cases. Then about maternity leave is an important issue, and now it is recognized in many institutions. That is mentioned under Article 42 about maternity leave. Then comes 43A. 43A talks about the participation of the workers in management of industries. 43B talks about the promotion of cooperative societies. Then 44, it's, it is uniform civil code. Can anyone tell me in which state of India 
there are some kind of uniform civil code Goa UP also UP no Goa then uniform civil code in uniform civil code in Goa UP so it's Goa but Goa is a kind of different uniform civil code which we are thinking to make as a uniform civil code that is a kind of uh, it is mostly inspired by portuguese i mean for portugal uh, the way portuguese used to frame the uniform civil code it is inspired by that it is not i mean what we think as a uniform civil code that is not a, that kind of true uniform civil code but we have some kind of uniform civil code that is the state of goa then next comes 45 for provision of early childhood care and education to children below the age of 6 year then for promotion of education and economic interest of scheduled caste scheduled tribe and other weaker section by which i mean uh, concept of uh, reservation came in our uh, in our constitution and article 48 says about the organization of agriculture and animal husbandry then article 48 talks about the protection and improvement of environment and safeguarding of forests and wildlife all these things came from 42nd amendment act then article 50 talks about the separation of judiciary and executive i have put a question regarding that which you have solved with so this is mentioned here in article 50 and article 51 talks about the promotion of international peace and security so can anyone tell me that is international peace and security uh, uh, or neighboring relation i mean neighboring state peace and security is a reasonable restriction under article 19 freedom of speech and expression is that a reasonable restriction no sir hmm. were there in last class while i was teaching the fundamental rights in i have told you to i mean remember those reasonable restrictions for making harmony and good relation with a uh, neighboring state or with friendly state we can put the reasonable restriction on fundamental right article 19 uh, for freedom of speech and expression so now we will basically uh, look at a comparative study we will see for fundamental rights and dpsp because lots of differences in bit, in between both of them so why i am teaching it most of the time direct question do not come from dpsp sometimes they are from where it have we have adopted and what things are there. but most of the time we have seen that uh, why um, preparing the question they usually put these options under the a uh, fundamental right i mean they will write an article and they will put uh, some provisions of fundamental right and they will also put some provision of dpsp so if you will remember what is in dpsp you can easily uh, uh easily you can uh, what we say uh eliminate those options so fundamental right is enforceable dpsp is not enforceable what it means it means that if your fundamental rights are getting violated you can directly approach to the court through writ but if i mean anything any violation of dpsp is going on you cannot approach to the court because it is not enforceable where it is written it is written under article 37 then i have already yesterday told you about this negative obligation fundamental rights put on negative obligation why because because it stops the state from violating our fundamental rights but it's it is is a positive affirmation 
uh, while uh, I mean record here DPSP save them to realize these goals to uh, put in uh, to bring it in under their law and policy. Then next is fundamental rights provides for political democracy, but DPSP provides for social and economical social and economic democracy. Next is fundamental right represents something that is static, where basic rights have been conferred on individual and the duty of the state to conserve these rights. So it talks about that I mean fundamental rights is given to every single individual separately and it is the duty of state to preserve those things. But if we can look in compare to DPSP, it is something like uh, DPSP is given for whole group, whole uh, uh, group of people or whole the uh, uh, whole the society or whole the uh, community for that DPSP is given. Fundamental right try to promote the welfare of individual, but DPSP is try to promote the welfare of community, and that's why it is in socialistic in nature. Fundamental right generally do not require legislation to achieve goal. We do not require a separate uh, uh, law, separate formation of law to achieve the fundamental rights. But for DPSP, we always require to make a separate, I mean, law. To bring those things, whatever is in, whatever are written in our directive principles. Then next is court are bound to declare a law unconstitutional if they violate one or more provision of Part Three. Agar koi bhi any law if is going to against the uh, our fundamental right, court has the power under Article Thirteen to declare it unconstitutional. But same thing is not same with DPSP because their uh, court do not have those powers to make anything unconstitutional if anything is going against our DPSP. So this one DPSP everybody got it. I mean anyone have any any doubt? No sir. Okay. So let's move on fundamental duties. Fundamental duty is in under part 4a. So don't get confused that fundamental is under part 4. Fundamental is under part 4a. This is a and whole separate part is made for fundamental duty. Can anyone tell how many fundamental duties are in our 11. 11. And in originally how many fundamental duties were? 10. 10. So, if there were originally 10, then how one more fundamental duty came? So, 11 was added by 86th amendment. Okay. So, 11th fundamental duty was added through 86th amendment act. So, Indian constitution, may, uh, I mean this thing came from 42nd amendment act. 1976 and it came by a committee that is we call it Swaran Singh committee and and it was headed by Sardar Swaran Singh. Can anyone tell me anything about Sardar Swaran Singh? Who was that person? Who is this person? So Sardar Swaran Singh was one of the uh, leader uh, starting he started his leadership from Akali Dal, later he became part of the Indian and National Congress and he is one of the longest serving cabinet minister in our country and during that time he was the defense minister, Sardar Swaran Singh. Yesterday we were talking about BP Mandal. BP Mandal was also a CM of Bihar for a few days, nearly 45 days he was the CM. And he was also many times elected in parliament from Bihar, BP Mandar. Okay, so let's come back again on fundamental. In 2002, one more fundamental uh, duty was added. So earlier it was 10 
and later it become 11 and it is under article 15, 51A so from where we have to fit fundamental duties USSR. Soviet Union. Uh, we took it from Soviet Union or we called it USSR United Soviet Socialist Republic or as United Soviet Socialist Union. Russia or something like that it is. Union of Soviet Union of Soviet Socialist Republic. Okay. Soviet Republic. okay. So then we have the list of fundamental duties all these things you have to go through one by one let me read one i mean because you have to keep in mind because these things come in your options to make you confused with fundamental rights so fundamental duties are different and like the same fundamental duties are also not enforceable like the dpsp fundamental duties are also not enforceable to abide by the constitution and respect the ideals of institution, national flag and national anthem. So at least you have the idea what is the first, first fundamental duty. It talks about to respect the ideals institutions of constitution, I mean and abide by constitution and respect our national flag and national anthem. Second is to cherish and follow the novel ideas of freedom struggle movement. Then next is to uphold and protect the sovereignty, unity and integrity. Next is to defend the country and render national service when called upon. So you have to, I mean, defend our country and whenever we, I mean, need something, whenever nation needs something, we should provide uh, our country, our national service, our service in the form of national service to promote harmony and spirit of common brotherhood in religious or linguistic, regional or sectional diversities to value and preserve the rich heritage of the country's composite culture to protect and improve the natural environment including forests, lakes, rivers and wildlife and to have compassion of living creature to develop scientific temper, humanism and spirit of inquiry and reform this uh, option that uh, this uh, fundamental duty of this in our in this article H, this one was uh, once we were put in our question. I mean, I think previous year or uh, before previous year, this option was given. I mean, uh, a question was asked on fundamental right, and this option was given in that. So by reading, you will get idea what is under fundamental duty. So that's why you can at least eliminate one option by reading it and you never get confused with fundamental duties and fundamental rights. To safeguard public property and abjure violence to strike towards excellence in all spheres of individual and collective activity so that the nation constantly rise to higher level of endeavor and achievement. And this is the, uh, the last fundamental duty which is 11th one which came from the 86th Constitutional Amendment Act in 2002 during the Atal Bihari Bajpayee government, India government to provide opportunities for education to his child or ward between the age of 6 and 14 years. So we have seen that this provision is, I mean, in, is also in our, uh, uh, in our fundamental line 21A same thing is also written here but this is not enforceable and whichever and that what was written what is written in our fundamental right that is enforceable through the court so does anyone have any doubt regarding this dpsp fundamental duties or any question No one have anything else, any other thing you want to ask, doubt, query. Okay. 
okay so i think we don't have anything to discuss so how many of you have universal book uh, sir i have yes okay. sir i have universal book okay so that book is a, a beneficial book that is a quite happy book but uh, we have to read some limited part of that like uh, chapter 14 and some other chapter i i will put a list make a list and put in your group so who, which which chapter you have to focus and read those chapters specifically properly so you people have get idea and you know there is a uh, for current affairs there is a um uh, catch up a book catch up book come okay, sir i mean na people ha uh, for this year i mean it have they haven't published yet it is published by singhals publication so i think they will publish in this month and i mean i am hoping that in the end of this month april they will publish it so by that uh so cover most of your i mean current affairs part we will also frame some questions regarding current affairs and read un there is a chapter on un in universal uh, read it properly every year at least two three four sometimes five even five questions they ask from that chapter from un uh, a chapter on based on united nations so read that chapter properly and uh, regarding nobel prize there are some static information regarding nobel prize like uh, uh, which country gives what prize i mean like peace prize is given by norway and the rest of the prizes are given by sweden so these are the some static information which are not going to change so have those thing like which institute gives the economic uh, nobel prize in economy so there are different different institutes which are providing that so also make a short notes of static information of nobel prize so uh, uh, last year i think three three question was asked from nobel prize and also just uh, i mean if they are mean not going to declare the name of this year coming nobel prize winners so remember the previous year one and they the last from the previous year so anything else uh comment and the casting can you please uh... sorry yes. sorry what what can you just repeat the name of the current affair book ketchup ketchup it's ketchup by singhal publication ketchup by singhal's publication tomato ke tomato ketchup wala ketchup sorry okay tomato ketchup wala ketchup and uh, right okay so if no more query then let's our sir yes. uh, matlab ye jaise jo nobel prize wala aapne bataya aur jaise main sir previous year questions mein bahut sare index aur ye sab bhi poochte hain ki ye committee ne aisi report di to sir wo sab information kahan se hame padhni chahiye uh, all these things some of these things are in universal i have a pdf for this can i share in the group I uh, first you should share with me then I will check it once okay. then I will ah uh, and uh, read these things are in your uh, universal book some of these things cover it from there and we have our exams in April and in May we will uh, after completing my this part Indian polity and constitution I will uh, pro- make some notes for you people on these things like you and not. and novel prize and some static current affairs which they regularly ask so on those things i will made a note for you people after april after having my exams and before that you should at least read it once so you people should have idea that uh, what i mean they are asking and uh, try to solve previous year question paper at least 
three four year previous year question paper. Uh, from start from 2018, 19, 20, and 21. At least these four year question paper. Please try to solve. If anyone don't have previous question paper, let me know. I will. I have. I will make a PDF of those and I will put in group. Anything else? Sir, is legal up to by A.P. Bharadwaj worth reading? A.P. Bharadwaj, you can read, you will get some idea. But I think legal aptitude in universal is uh, better than A.P. Bharadwaj. But you can at least solve the question from A.P. Bharadwaj. Because I was reading legal maxim from universal as well as A.P. Bharadwaj. In uh, universal legal maxims are quite good a point in comparison to the uh, Bhardwaj group. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay, then let's let's end our class here. Thank you, sir. Okay. Why? I don't know.